what we looked at in the report were areas of what we call extreme poverty or concentrated poverty. And these are neighborhoods where at least 40% of the population lives below the poverty line. That's two to three times the, the national average rate. Uh, and we saw that the number of people living in those sorts of neighborhoods over the decade uh, rose by about a third. Uh, and now uh, the number, the percentage of poor people who live in those sorts of communities, we estimate that by 2010 it's about 15 percent, up from 10 percent at the beginning of the decade. And this poses a whole host of problems for people who are living in the midst of very poor neighborhoods from low performing public schools to a lack of job opportunities, access to, to basic services like retail, uh, higher levels of crime, poor public health outcomes. You know, all these things sort of uh, gang up on families in the midst of concentrated poverty such that it makes it even more difficult for them to escape poverty over time. The rises in the, uh, the Midwest especially, uh, and the South to an extent too, were much greater than those in the Northeast and the West, at least through uh, 2009 when, when some of our data stop. I think reflecting the fact that for the, a lot of Midwestern metropolitan areas, the, the recession that started at the beginning of the decade never really ended. They continued to lose manufacturing jobs throughout the decade and that just rippled through the rest of these economies and affected uh, poor neighborhoods in a, in a very severe way. Uh, some of that happening in metropolitan areas in the South and, and Texas as well. Um, what is happening within metropolitan areas, though, is, is even more fascinating in that, yes, concentrated poverty definitely rose in cities. Cities have much higher rates of concentrated poverty, about 20% uh, versus 10% nationally. Uh, but concentrated poverty, in terms of the number of people living in very, very poor neighborhoods, rose much faster in suburbs than in cities over the decade. I think about 41% in suburbs, about 17% in cities. Uh, and that's, again, reflective of the fact, say, in a, in a Midwestern metropolitan area like Detroit, like Chicago, uh, the people who are affected by job loss and going below the poverty line, those people are increasingly likely to be suburban. As our overall population is diversified, as it's affecting more types of areas, not just cities, but now suburbs as well, the profile of people living in the midst of concentrated poverty has changed as well. So over the decade we saw that the share of residents who are living in very, very poor neighborhoods who are white, who are more educated, uh, who do not receive public assistance or live in public housing, uh, who are native born, not immigrants, all those things have been on the rise. Now if you are black, if you are Latino, if you are on public assistance, if you're living in public housing, you're still more likely to live in these communities. Those people are affected at disproportionate rates, but I think we need to get over what have been the conventional notions of you know, inner city concentrated poverty neighborhoods and sort of broaden our perspective on who's affected by concentrated poverty and as a result what we need to do to, to tackle it. Uh, I think it takes a, a, a multifaceted approach and actually has to be um, specific to the, the regional context in which it's occurring. You know, so at the federal level, I think we need to think about how we deploy uh, our, our public and affordable housing programs in different ways. First, by, uh, by rethinking the, the warehouses of concentrated poverty we built in the middle 20th century in terms of public housing and, and doing what we can to diversify the housing stock in these communities, um, not confining people who are in need of housing assistance to very, very poor neighborhoods because you just surround them with other people who need that assistance. If we're not intentional about building those affordable housing opportunities in suburbs that have better schools, more jobs, uh, you know, better access to transportation, we're just going to end up warehousing the poor in very, very poor suburbs and then we haven't solved any problems at all. So I think the federal government has a couple of tools at its disposal uh, to help alleviate concentrated poverty. But states, regions, municipalities have to be part of that solution too. 